So this week we started uh, the SAFE uh, courses again. So that's Shravasti Abbey, um, Friends, Education. So it's an online uh, course that we do periodically. And um, so I'm facilitating one of the courses. And one of the participants had a quote on her email that really caught my attention. You know how something sometimes just grabs you. So this was one of those things. So the quote is, it is better to travel well than to arrive. And uh, <laughs> that very much got my attention. Um, coming out of winter retreat, uh, we roll out many things at once. And um, uh, for most of us, I think, uh, retreat is a time to really go in and to settle down and to kind of go deep. And so then we come out and it's like, <laughs> you know? and so that's what it's been like for me uh, in the last while. And so uh, I've been working with my mind that um, has this uh, uh, anxiety. Um, so really it comes from, at least for me, from being so focused on the goal, which we're conditioned certainly to focus on. And... Um, not so helpful, um, because that kind of focus of on the goal, not on the j journey to the goal, uh, brings so much misery in the mind. For me, it um, really activates a perfection attitude. Uh, got to do this, got to do this this way. Um, and the reason it brings misery is because it isn't at all connected to reality, which is everything is changing moment to moment. So I have concocted this uh, idea of how things are going to be in my mind, and I then solidify them, and then I bump up against how it is so different than that, and uh, that's the misery, I think. And so I just wanted to share a few ways that I work with my mind when it's uh, in that space of uh, focused on the goal instead of the journey. Um, so one of the things that gets my attention when I get wrapped up in that is that I can experience the energy in my body and it's uh, uh, more, f more toward adrenaline. Um, and then my mind has... Uh, worry and some rumination about, you know, got to get it done, got to get it done. Um, I write lists that I can't read. <laughs> uh, um, and so when all of that arises, then I take a pause. And I think the first thing I say is, okay, you're making yourself pretty miserable here. Is that what you want to do? And the answer is no, I do not want to do that, even though I'm very well versed in that <laughs> skill and can do it well, I don't want to. Uh, and so that brings some acceptance um, and then also some self-empathy. Um, uh, and I just kind of describe kind of what my mind is starting to go toward, which is this um, uh, unrealistic... Uh, kind of miserable uh, focus on what I have to get done. Uh, and I think the older I get, the more sensitive I am to that mind space because uh, the older I get, the less moments I have. And I don't want to spend my moments in misery uh, that, I, that is of, of my own creation. It's not anything from outside. It's what I'm doing to myself. And I don't want to do that anymore. So, um, so I pause and I, I set a different intention, or I guess you could say motivation, whatever word you want to use. And so um, then it becomes kind of a... Mm, it's not really a battle, but it's a pull toward one side or the other. So my mind wants to get into the oh and what I have to do and get kind of anxious again. And the other side is pulling me back to, no, don't go there. Don't go there. And so there's a bit of a tug of war for a little while. Um, and so however that comes up, I just keep 
um, bringing back my intention of if this, you know, if these are the last moments of my life, do I want to spend them focused on some goal that's really unrealistic? No, no. So um, that helps me kind of wake up to, uh, you know, it's so precious, these moments. So the best I can offer in this world is when I'm not in a pressured, anxious, unrealistic, goal-oriented mindset. Um, and when I remember that, then I calm down. And when I can get into that calmer space, I end up doing much more output than what I do with goal-focused, got to get it done, check off the list stuff. Um, so it's much more efficient, actually, and certainly much more um, enjoyable. Um, and so to me, that's a compassion practice. Um, and then the last thing I try to do every day is to uh, rejoice in what I offered today. Um, and that kind of sounds like um, with the information I had, with the energy I had, with the circumstances that arose, um, I did the very best I could. And if that isn't good enough, what would be? That's all I can do. That's all any of us can do. And so to actually have some joy about that. Because, you know, if you think about it, we all have 853 million different things we could choose to do. Many that could be very harmful. And that is not what we're choosing. You know, we're trying to, to be helpful and beneficial and do it in a kind manner. And so that's where I want my mind to land at the end of the day, and that's what I want to fall asleep with, that kind of mindset. And what I've noticed over time is when I have that mindset at sleep time, and then uh, when I wake up, I have less uh, days of waking up where my mind is just in a foul mood and I have no idea why. So it's beneficial. Uh, it turns our mind into a place that is more aligned with reality. More aligned with reality. And of course, the Buddhist taught us the more that we align with reality, the less misery we have. To me, that reminds me of a really good explanation of be content to create the causes. Ah, uh, yeah. You know? yeah. And that reminds me of how sometimes we have different sayings, and if those don't really land somewhere for me very well, and that one doesn't a million, then to retranslate it so that I can get hold of it and yeah, make it mine. So, yeah. 